Welcome to Elijah Streams with your host, Steve Schultz, president and founder of Elijah List Ministries. Stay tuned for another exciting show where you'll see the many ways God is interrupting your world, your nation, and your family to release His blessings and decisions on the earth. Watch today as another prophetic voice speaks to you with fresh revelation from heaven. And now, sit back and enjoy Elijah Streams. Welcome to Elijah Streams. I'm your host, Steve Schultz. Do you have so much faith that you could even dine right along with the crocodiles? Our next guest has done just that. And like you, I'm excited to hear about this amazing story and so much more. Let's welcome our next guest, founder of Freedom for the Nations, DeMonte Edmonds. DeMonte, nice to have you Thank back you, on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, we've done a couple of shows, and I, mean, I, I love it when you come because we talk about stories that build faith. And, Amen. And, and, uh, uh, can we just start right off? You've got a great story about how the Lord began to, I'll just, I don't want to prophesy about the, <laughs> one of your, the births of your children. Tell me that story. Yes, it was our uh, second child, my daughter, named Avery. Uh, my wife was newly pregnant, and she had had a, a C-section with the first child. And so with that, she prayed, God, I don't want a C-section. I want a natural birth. I'm going to believe you for it to be natural. And one day, a friend of mine, Dr. Martin, called me from Norway, and he said, I have a word for you and your wife. He said, I see that she's pregnant with a child. It's a girl. And he said, when the baby comes, it's going to be a natural birth. It's going to be a three-hour labor, and it's going to be a seven-pound baby girl. So I told my wife she ran up and down the stairs. And so fast forward, when we actually went to the hospital, my wife had a baby girl. And the baby, she was like 6.95 pounds, and it was a three-hour labor, no complications, natural birth, wow. no medicines, anything. And so the Lord kept his word and brought it to pass. So i got to ask you, because um, a lot of times I'm, while I'm listening to the story, I'm listening through the eyes and ears yes. of the viewer. Um, and I've had people ask this question before, especially when they're new to the prophetic. Why would God bother or care to give the, the detail of how much the baby's going to weigh? What's, what's the point? I might have an idea what the point is, but what do you think the point is? Well, I think twofold. I think one, it just gave my wife a, that extra surge. Sometimes we're in faith, but the enemy creeps in with doubt and unbelief. And so sometimes when you get a word that's very specific in detail, it just anchors your faith even more. Secondly, I believe it let us know that it was purposeful for us to have that second child, which was my daughter, that God's hand is on her life and that he has a divine purpose for her. So she wasn't an accident. She wasn't by coincidence that God said there's a purpose for her. So down to the Bible says he even numbers the hairs on our yeah. ha ha head. Yeah, you if we have hair, we don't yeah, have, have much. much. <laughs> <laughs> when, yeah, when, when, when God will give me uh, details or either through a prophetic person or I get my own, when there's a scripture I can't quite name, the, it says these things... I'm telling you in advance so that when it happens, you'll know it was me. That in Isaiah. Yeah. That's in Isaiah. So um, I, it, when it happens, it not only tells you God was involved, it tells you God is involved. It's, it, was, it would be as if God is in heaven and saying, see, I told you so, right? It's like yes. he, he wants you to know. I, I want to um, point out this other thing. The, the, the prophet said it was going to be a, a seven-pound baby. Yes. And I really uh, respect you, the way you wrote this up, because, when, because you said it was a 6.9-pound baby. And someone else, I, again, I've had people detract when they hear yes. a story. They said, it's not a seven-pound baby. It was a 6.9-pound <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. but, but people need, there there's, needs to be a maturity yes. in hearing the voice of the Lord. Because the, the Lord said it's going to be seven. Sometimes when the Lord says that, it's exactly seven. Pinpoint. Point. Yes. Other times it's so close that it's yes. as if it's exactly the word, you know, yes. because babies are born. My first was six pounds, 15 ounces. I remember that, you know, yes. so, so you've got some stories about how uh, the Lord visited you concerning faith and the gift of faith. Yeah, so that night when the baby was born, I was exhausted, I was tired, but I wanted to just give respect to the gentleman that delivered that prophetic word. So I called him and said, Dr. Martin, your word came to pass. The baby's here, three hour labor, the baby's around seven pounds, right at seven pounds. And I, I shared that with him and he said, you're gonna sense Jesus come into the hospital room and check on the child. I had just felt Jesus' presence in the room 30 minutes before. Wow. Then he says, Jesus is gonna check on you too, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I, and I just, I listened to it, but I was just so exhausted and so, when I got home that night, I went into my time of worship and prayer, 
fell asleep for a few seconds. And then the Lord woke me up immediately and he said, come up higher. And I saw the Lord Jesus Christ. And he began to speak to me about the gift of faith. Wow. Well, so what, can you tell what, what those? Definitely. What, what did he say? Well, we were like outside the city of heaven or uh, and we were in the air and I saw the Lord maybe seven or eight feet from me. Wow. And he began to talk to me about the end times and talk to me about revival. And he said, do you know what the gifts of the spirit look like? And I never thought the gifts of the spirit in the spirit room had an appearance or shape no, or form. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think they. I would just the gifts are the gifts. Gifts it's, are the gifts. Yeah, exactly. You operate with or something. And most of the time, if I've had an encounter with the Lord, and He asks me a question, I already I don't know the answer. So it's almost a rhetorical type of you know question. And then He said, "Let me show you what the gift of faith looks like." And I saw this pool of I don't want to say water. It's like energy, like power. It's like it was like water, but almost like power, like energy. It was blue with like a purplish hue and it had like a golden aura and outline it was beautiful. Wow. He said, when I pour it out on a person, it supercharges them, super energizes them. It gives them this great measure of faith that they can do what they wouldn't be able to do out of their own faith or their own strength. Wow. Well, uh, okay. Why do you think, DeMonte, that he did this at the birth of your child? That's just like a very odd thing, right? Here, you're here, you're exhausted. You just need some sleep. And he decides to teach you about the gift of faith and the future of the church. Maybe because I needed faith to take care of, feed more mouths in the house. That was probably part <laughs> of it. But I think sometimes the Lord recognizes points of demarcation in our life. You know, in the Bible, the, the patriarchs were always set up memorial stones. So there's places in our life that are memorials or time periods that are so important. A birth of a child, a wedding, a death of a loved one, that the Lord almost uses those time stamps to give us revelation or to shift us into a new season. They use the term memorial stones. Uh, and right around the time my son was born, a year later, I was struggling. My father had just passed away. And God, God does memorial stones, but we do memorial stones. And I had no idea how we were going to feed any more mouths. Yeah. And, or I had to get from the East Coast to the West Coast. The job had fallen apart because the, the company closed that I worked for. And I was on the coast of Florida, and I, I went and I found a great big stone like this. had barnacles on it. Like, and I decided that this was going to be my memorial stone. And I said, Lord, this is the stone yes. that's going to memorialize it. I trust you to get me from where I am because I had no idea. I can, I can feel those feelings now as I'm telling the story. Uh, I, I can tell you right where that stone is today. It's right by the hearth of the, this, fire, this uh, stove. Every once in a while, I totally forget about it. And I look at that stone. It's just an ugly stone. And it, but it There's, encourages you. It just says, this was the stone that proved to myself and to the Lord that I trust him no matter what. So I encourage you. So you you talked about the baby being born yes. as a memorial. So I love that. Yes. That's really good. We'll come back. We'll talk some more about this. Wonderful. Okay, we'll be right back. God is moving in the earth today, and we need broadcasts like Elijah's streams. This program features some of the most powerful voices in the Christian community. Providing prophetic insights, happenings, and revelation taking place all over the world. These things could be the difference in a person's life. Igniting a passion for the voice of God. In the next great prophet. In the next great teacher or evangelist. Come on, guys. I encourage you to be a part of it. Give into this place of impact. Help bring the prophetic word of God. His presence and His anointing into people's lives. Please know that you are playing a key role in helping reach people around the world. So, what should you do? Sow into good soil. Please donate and get behind what God is doing through Elijah Streams today. 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 Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for believing in the prophetic. Hey, we're back here at Elijah Streams. We're with DeMonte Edmonds. DeMonte, let's talk about, we talked about the gift of faith. You've got a story about crocodiles and <laughs> faith versus fear. Tell that story. Yes, so one day I'm in South Africa and I'm riding with a pastor. And he says, I know a place where there's a lot of crocodiles where you can go and actually sit down with the crocodiles or go into the midst of crocodiles. And he said, do you want to go? And he was laughing and joking. He, but, he didn't think you'd take him up on it. Huh? No, he was just joking in general. And so I felt fear come over me. I felt fear, literally tangible fear come over me. Wow. And I've always been a person of faith. And I don't believe that we should allow fear to have root in us or grow in us. And so 
I felt in that moment, the Lord challenged me. I heard the Lord said, if you go, I will eradicate the fear that's in your soul. Wow. And he didn't tell me I had to go. He said, but if you go by faith, trusting that I'll protect you, I'll eradicate the faith that's in your soul. And so I wanted to move forward to the next level with God and it always takes a new dimension of faith. And I said, well, let's go, let's do it. I'll go and have lunch in the midst of crocodiles. And so we went to this place uh, where there's crocodiles in South Africa. We had to walk through 14 crocodiles. Whoa. Then going to this other section was a little table and it was 15 snapping crocodiles. And so I sat there ate my food, and then immediately, after, almost immediately, peace came over me. I felt the gift of faith come on me. Wow. It was like it was just me and Jesus there for about 60 seconds. I forgot about the crocodiles, forgot about my safety, and I literally felt the tangible presence of God. When, when, we, when we were, the last segment, we talked about this gift of faith, what it yes. looked like, this kind of purplish, do you feel like that some of that dropped on you, so to speak? Yes, I felt it come on me and it brought with it just a supernatural piece of supernatural protection. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm putting myself in that place with <laughs> crocs around because uh, people are saying, well, what did that feel like? Describe to the best of your ability what it felt like for the fear to oh, disappear. So I felt a wave come over me. Oh, and it was a wave of peace, but also a wave of boldness. Because right after that peace, like a tr uh, tranquilizer came over me, giving me peace. Like a spiritual tranquilizer. Yeah, because faith gives you peace. If you're yeah. in faith, you should have peace. And it was some people watching, like 20 people up, 30 feet high. They were not in the crocodile pit. And I looked up to, to them and said, hey, if you want to come down and eat the crocodiles, they can't touch you or harm you. I'm a man of God. As long as I'm here. Jesus is here with me. They can't touch you. That's and good. I wasn't being arrogant. I yeah. really had the gift of faith on me and I had boldness yeah. on me. And I felt probably what Daniel felt in the lion's den. Um, talk, talk to me for a minute about God said he would eradicate the fear. Did that, are you saying you've never had fear again or is there some sort of a hold that it had on you that it doesn't have today? So what happened, I've been praying, but I was doing so much traveling. I wasn't reading the word as much as I was before. And so my shield of faith had dropped a little bit. I was walking downstairs one day and I actually heard the enemy say, you're going to get sick. First thing that hit me was fear. I began to do mentally all the things, bind and loose and said those things. Yeah. But in my heart, I still felt more fear than normal. I broke out. My head broke out. My back broke out. My butt broke out. My legs broke out. My feet you broke you out. You broke out. You mean just like itching, scratching, burning. And my wife kicked me out the bed. Oh. I went to the doctors. Wow. They took me to the skin specialist. They called the whole staff in. They said I had a fungus, a bacteria, and a virus that all were rare and unrelated. Whoa. It was a spiritual attack. It wasn't a natural attack. It was a spiritual attack. But yes. it wasn't like you really picked up a fungus, probably. No, there's no way you could pick up this fungus, bacteria and virus all on the same all day. The same they, time. They're not even related. Right. And so I knew it was a spiritual attack. And, you know, the enemy had spoke to me the day before I was going to get sick and it happened the very next day. So when I was in South Africa, I realized there was an open door through fear and I wanted it to be eradicated and removed. And the thing with the crocodiles that you feel like that was like the, was that the beginning or was that the end? I mean, did, did, did you get delivered like? Y yes, immediately I felt, yeah, I, didn't, I never tangibly felt fear come on me ever again. How would you uh, counsel, for lack of a better word, or, or advise someone who says, I've got fear from the time I was a child, the least little thing I get, I feel it, it's like uh, something that goes through my soul and I feel it's a horrible, thick, heavy fear. How does a person like that find relief like you did? Because yeah. God spoke to you. Yes. Uh, there's a, people that are still trying to learn how to hear his voice. What would you tell them to do? I would tell them, first of all, get in a Bible believing church, get full of the word of God, read in the Bible as much as possible, listen to faith filled speakers, get some friends and associates, people that are going to pray with you and speak faith, begin to make an atmosphere of faith around you and with you. And then also, if you can get in contact with a good deliverance ministry, they maybe can identify those traumas of places that open the doors for that fear. Because a lot of times phobias are really spirits of fear that are manifesting are. Are. based they're. on trauma that happened in people's childhood. Yeah, uh, you know, I my mother suffers a great deal with uh, fear of enclosures, fear of going out, fear of stairs, fear of second floors, fear, all kinds of fears of flying, fear of elevators. Wow. And uh, she doesn't have, uh, you know, I love my mother very much, she's 85 years old, she doesn't have a belief 
system. And, and when I tell her about mine, she doesn't believe in that. <laughs> so I, I, it's a terribly debilitating thing. Yes. It's something that if you're younger, or it doesn't matter if you're younger or older, you need to get a hold of that uh, and, and get rid of that fear thing. When you're standing and prophesying over someone, uh, DeMonte, there must have been times when you were afraid you weren't going to hear the, the, the voice of the Lord. Are you less afraid now when you stand over praying for someone um, that you will or will not hear the voice of God? Yes, just by reason of use. The Bible says by reason of use, you have your senses exercised to discern between good and evil. So just after doing it for a while. And then secondly, I have more faith not so much in my gifting. I have more faith in God's faithfulness Okay. from walking with God from a number of years. And so just my faith in God's faithfulness, I believe he's going to minister to people and bless and, them. And I think it's King James where it says by reason of use. What that means is by practice. By practice, It just yes. means do it over and over and over again. Uh, I've been uh, lovingly rebuked by people that were my mentors because I wasn't prophesying enough wow. when I got up front. And, and they said, you, when you get up front because you have this gift, because that's your calling, you need to put, place a demand, a demand on heaven's resources for you to prophesy. In other words, she was saying, you've been trained, Steve. You need to practice. <laughs> yep. And so those people that say, well, I don't hear God very well, you need to prophesy over 100 people and then another 100 until you begin to, you know, I guess I am hearing from the Lord because yep. everything I keep coming to my mind turns out to be true. So Confirmation. by yeah. practice, you you learn that you are hearing from God. Absolutely. Because we all do. So Okay, well, we'll, we'll come back and explore this some more. It's time for another exciting and brand new report called Prophecy Decoders with Sunil Isaac. Watch now as Sunil reveals how some recent prophecies are coming true today. We'll be right back. Welcome to Prophecy Decoders. I'm Sunil Isaac. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his plans or his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Yes, God is still speaking today and many times he does it through prophetic voices. And I want to illustrate this by revisiting a prophetic word given by Hank Kuhneman on August 18, 2019. Listen now, there is a lying spirit that has gone out among your land and they shall now seek to lie and to create a proverb in this nation regarding your economy. You shall hear more words like recession. You shall hear words that say the economy is failing and to not seek to reelect because he has not brought what he promised. But yet, America, you shall bloom. United States, you shall prosper. What I love about this prophetic word is that an element of time has been embedded in the prophetic code. And that's what we do at Prophecy Decoders. We decode the prophetic word and see unearth the secrets, the clues that God has embedded in the code. And the time element is introduced with the word reelect. So we know that a prophetic word given on August 18, 2019, at a time when the economy was humming along, the stock market was doing extremely well, approaching record highs. A prophetic word about recession, the economy failing, comes out counter to the current news at that time. But that word reelect is so important because we realize God was not caught by surprise with the economic circumstances that have taken place as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, the fallout, the economic fallout. Let's look at some headlines. Business Insider had this headline, April 18, 2020. These five jarring economic signals flash red this past week and they show just how quickly a recession is descending upon America. MarketWatch had this headline April 18, 2020. All signs point to deepening recession, even as U.S. eyes how to reopen for business. Headlines about the economy. Yahoo Finance, April 15, 2020. The economy is literally in free fall, economists. The Atlantic, April 3, 2020. The economy is collapsing. So are Trump's re-election chances. So there you have it. You see the prophetic word manifesting and unfolding before our very eyes in the year 2020, April 2020. Recession, the economy is failing, and how already they're talking about how it'll affect Trump's re-election chances. Now, what is the takeaway? I want you to be encouraged because God has a redemptive plan. If we see these unusual signs manifest, what else can we look at? Let's revisit the prophetic word given by Hank Kuhneman, August 18, 2019. You shall hear more words like recession. You shall hear words that say the economy is failing and to not seek to reelect because he has not brought what he promised. But yet, America, you shall bloom. United States, you shall prosper. There you have it. If all the other signs can manifest, why not the sign of America, you shall bloom. 
United States, you shall prosper. Let that also manifest. So believe that today, not only for the nation, but your life as well. You will bloom, you will prosper. Be encouraged today. Thank you for watching. God is moving on the earth today and we need broadcasts just like Elijah Streams. It features powerful prophetic voices. Providing prophetic insight, happenings, and revelation taking place all around the world. These things could be the difference in a person's life, igniting a passion for the voice of God in the next great prophet. In the next great teacher or evangelist. Come on, guys. I encourage you to be a part of it. Give it to this place of impact and help to bring the prophetic word of God, his presence and his anointing into people's lives. Please know that you are playing such a key role in helping reach people around the world. So what should you do? Sow into good soil. Please donate and get behind what God is doing through Elijah's dreams today. 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 Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for believing in the prophetic. Hey, we're back and thank you, Sunil. I know you all enjoyed this week's segment of Prophecy Decoders like I did. I always love to see the many ways God's voice is still active on the earth and his prophecies are still coming true every day. Well, DeMonte, this is going fast, isn't it? Yes, but it's um, good. Let's talk a little bit more about the gift of faith because you've got some stories where faith, and if you, when you tell us if you can describe to a certain degree what it what you felt like when you said, you, you've got a story where the gift of faith fell on you. I want people to know, what does that feel like? So what's Yes, that story? yes. I was in Grenada and there was a woman that was pregnant and the Lord just sent me over to her. And she, the Lord told me to tell her that I saw a, a boy in her womb. She confirmed it. And the Lord said that the males in the family had a spirit of alcoholism and a spirit of anger. Wow. And the Lord wanted to stop with this child that was in the womb because the Lord's hand was on this child. And so all of a sudden, I felt a supernatural surge. I felt literally my faith expand. I felt a boldness come over me wow. to decree and declare that this generational curse would be broken. So I pointed at the baby in her womb and said, in Jesus' name, this curse of alcoholism and anger is broken now. But when I said it, two things happened. The man over to the left just fell down and he began to get delivered. Wow. I found out that was the child's father. And so he was tied into that curse. So as it was broken, it affected him. But then secondly, the woman fell down. I thought she was going into labor, but she was receiving like a manifestation of deliverance, a sign that that curse was being broken, that demonic curse was being broken off the child in the womb. And I felt that power come over me to break like a breaker anointing come wow. and lift. So it's like the Lord revealed that the males. Yes. And this is like three generations, right? The father, the son, and then his child. Right? Yes. That the males had this curse on them. So a lot of people watch this and go, well, wait a minute. You know, I know I've got these, but that, how does that relate to my father or my son? Yes. What God did with you is he in a sense, baptizes you with the spirit of faith, yes. gives you this word at the same time, and his God shows up and says, I want these three males. Not that you knew it at the time. You just need to pray for the one. <laughs> the one, yes. And God does this. You know, some people say, well, they, one of his names is Jehovah Stinky. <laughs> he comes up, he, he, no wanted this, he wanted this person delivered, and then on either side, yes, the father and his son yes. get delivered. Um, let me ask you about that. Um, related to, we're, we're in these days, some people say it's the last days, it's always been the last days since since the cross, we've been in the last days. Um, is God in these last days that we're in, is he amping up his power or are we just becoming a little more aware? Or what, what's going on out there? Both. I believe the teaching and revelation is making us more aware. But when I saw Jesus in that visitation, he said, this is the gift of faith. And then he said, look up higher. And it, the vision expanded. That pool of energy or faith, it expanded like 10 times larger. He said, this is what has been available to the church up until now. This is what I'm about to make available in the future. He said, people like Smith Wigglesworth and great men and women of God, what they did in the past, what we're going to do is going to overshadow what they have done. Yeah, back in those days, 50s, 60s, 70s, yes. uh, there was one or two men or three or four men that were famous, Smith Wigglesworth. Uh, Jack Coe. Yeah, Allen. you know the names even better than I do. They were like famous yes. in their time and everyone would flock and fill uh, halls and stadium or not stadiums but tents and tents, yeah. churches 
And what I'm hearing you say is God says, what I did for the few, I'm going to do for the many. Yes. Is that right? For the many and at a greater capacity, greater frequency. That's amazing because <laughs> I'm ready for that too. <laughs> Amen. You know, I've had my times of feeling f the faith. Yeah. And it was so special and it was so powerful. And I thought, man, I wish I could just be in this all the time. Yes. I think what I'm hearing you say is God's saying there's going to be a lot of people in it all the time. Yes, it's going to be, I mean, just so many testimonies and just all over the place, things happening that are so unbelievable. It won't just be one or two people. I, uh, I saw a video not that long ago where somebody went to Disneyland and they recorded it and they would just pick people. I mean, we talk about finding people on the yeah. street and prophesying to them. They were finding people on Main Street USA at Disneyland, Anaheim, California, and they began to prophesy and say, do you hurt in your body somewhere? And where do you hurt? Oh, I, someone says, do you hurt right here in your shoulder? Says, I think you're hurt. And then people would get healed and bro broken through. Right in the pump, that's the way that, it should isn't be. Isn't that amazing? Yes. yes. And I just think that's going to be happening in, in great, great measure. Yes. Let's talk for a minute in the last two minutes. Uh, we discovered just today by sort of accident that, <laughs> that you and I each had the same experience years apart, because mine was like 15 years ago where I prophesied to someone, to a group of people in the Pentagon, and I walked around the Pentagon. You had that same experience. Yes. On a Friday night, I was in prayer and the Lord just said, go to the Pentagon and speak for me and prophesy for me. And I said, go where and do <laughs> what? I said, Lord, they kill people for it professionally. <laughs> you know, that's what I told the Lord. And so I said, Lord, how would I even get in there? So through a series of circumstances, he opened the door and um, I was able to go into the Pentagon, speak to some officials, wow. speak to some generals and to bring forth the word of the Lord. And so some of them were tearing, some of them were weeping. Wow. You know, I don't know if even some of them were Christians, but the Lord, every word that was spoken, people confirmed it. When I got there, he started to give me names. And so as I moved yeah. around, I would meet the person, say, you're the name that I just told the person that we were gonna meet today. And this is what the Lord is saying. And so wow. he was just faithful to go into a place of power to bring forth the word of the Lord. That's amazing. Demonte, we could talk for hours. Yes. And we're gonna do lunch after that. We will talk for hours, but, yeah. um, in this last minute, there's people watching that they're excited about what they're hearing. There's someone that says, man, I want to walk in that. Would you look into the camera and just pray for those people to receive what they're yes. hearing? Well, Father, we just thank you right now, even as people have heard the message about faith, that you would cause a divine stirring in their hearts, that you would cause this hunger, God, that must be filled. Your word says that those that thirst and hunger for righteousness shall be filled. So I pray right now, God, that those that desire to come up to a new level of faith and a new level of intimacy with you, mm. that you would meet them in that place of desire, that you would supernaturally charge them, that you would give them dreams and visions and words from you that will cause their faith to skyrocket to a new level in Jesus Christ's name. Well, I want to thank you, DeMonte. Thank First you. of all, thanks for coming. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank you for being available to the Lord because you're being available to the Lord not only on the street, but you're available to come in and share those stories. It's going to, it's increasing our faith. Amen. And when our faith is increased, it opens the door for the gift of faith to come on. So Absolutely. I just thank you so much for doing that. Thank so you. So we'll do this again, all right? Thank God you. God bless you. Well, that's our show for today. You too can operate in the gift of faith and watch the miraculous happen right before your eyes. We'll see you next time in another exciting episode of Elijah Streams. Bye-bye.